This is Fear Dragon, and I'm here with the McCann God. What's up, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been a great event so far, so yeah. Yeah, you had a, a pretty good run through the bracket and everything. Um, I, I know you're laughing, and I'm sure every player is going to say, like, no, well, could have gone better. Yeah, right. You know, it is what it is. You know, the thing is, when you're playing the games, you, you, know, you know someone to a certain point, but, you know, games of StarCraft happen so fast. You're just you're making decisions so fast. You know, you can win, you can lose. You know, even versus the great players, I think, you know, I feel like I can definitely take games off of all the players here, even the best ones here, even even Neve. I think I have a chance PvP, you know, but, you know, it happened. I got Euthermal, I got game time, and the game just didn't go my way. I think uh, that's just StarCraft sometimes. You know, you practice, you play, but sometimes you just can't, you just don't have it when you play. You just lose the game. Uh, this is your second LAN event? Yes. My first major event, I was at Cheezadelphia, and uh, they're both great experiences. I think, you know, the thing is for me, uh, personally, where I kind of am starting to get expectations because I'm getting higher and higher on the ladder, so people are starting to expect more from me. But personally, when I come to an event, obviously I'm going to compete my hardest and try to win, you know, go far, but it's really just to meet the people. Um, I don't really, I'm not really going to the event because I'm like, oh, I got to win the money, I got to get in the money. It's more or less just I want to meet all the people that are in the scene and part of the community and, you know, just see everybody that you talk to online throughout all the years, really. You're, I feel like, one of the most interesting cases in the North American scene right now, or just actually in, like, the foreign scene in general, because you're one of the people that I think many know you first and foremost as a streamer. And I also feel like I used to I used to think of you that way, but recently, I'd say in, like, the past few months, you've had some ridiculously good performances. Like you were saying, like, you, you are actually able to take games or, like, beat really, really good players of, like, top world-class level. Like, what do you consider yourself? You know, I'll always be a streamer first. I think the thing is, it, it, to me, you know, I have gone to a level where I'm beating players like Alive, Gumio, Jokji, and, it, you know, it's incredible. It's an incredible feeling winning games versus great players. Uh, you really can't, you really don't beat that adrenaline and that excitement of winning games like that. But, you know, I'm never going to stop streaming because to me personally, you know, I look at the competitors out here and there's tons of good players that didn't even get in the money. You know, Masa, you know, maybe a ton of players who only got $1,000 and they're way better than me. And I look at that and I say, these players are insanely good. And, you know, I, I have an ability to stream, produce content, and it is really hard to be a StarCraft pro. I mean, you work so hard and there are so many good players and you just, you know, you have an off day when you get here and then, you know, all of a sudden you don't have any money for a couple months. And it, it's just really hard to be a StarCraft player. So I would always be a streamer first and it just... I'm blessed enough to got to my level where I can actually compete with some of the best players. So I'll always be a streamer first, but I'll definitely look to compete and surprise some people. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Do you feel like being a streamer, when you do try and enter these competitions, like it kind of hinders your ability? Because I know there's always like the thing, I was talking to Nero about this, like when you're streaming, you're talking and you are you're super interactive with the chat like i'll be dissing out the trash talk or you know be like m canning i now that i'm a sub to the m canning fam my girlfriend is suddenly just like 10 times happier like let's go and you'll be like responding while you're sending out disruptor shots and everything like obviously that of course affects your play and everything the way that you practice yeah some people think you know it's so it's it is, it is a funny line i think it depends on the person uh some people think you really can't compete when you stream and it definitely is hard. I mean, not a single guy in there doesn't know how I play or at least my style. The good thing for me is I've been playing macro for years and years where I'm not, I can't really just get metagame by a bunch of, you know, they can't metagame my cheese builds. I'm just going to, you got to be in a macro game at the end of the day. So, I, you know, that's a good thing for me where I feel like even though they know my style, they still have to beat me. So it does, you know, I streamed all the way up to DreamHack. I was still streaming nights, and I did, you know, the thing is once the groups came out and I got you thermal game time, I, I could feel them watching the chat whether they were or not. You know, it, it is what it is, though, and, you know, it's, I'm going to try to do my best here, but sometimes it's just what you get as a streamer. I mean, it, for me personally, if I really wanted to become, you know, maybe the next level, I'd put four hours off stream as well instead of just being playing on stream. But StarCraft's a hard game to grind for a long period of time for me. So it's one of those things where I'd love to be better, but, you know, I am at the level where I'm at and I'm pretty happy for it, with it. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, you are also a full-time student, right? Yes, I am. I will be. I have a few more classes, and I'll be. Should be done in the summer. I got four classes left, so I'm hoping to finish all four in the summer. So, yeah, and then I'll be graduated with business marketing, and I'll probably be full-time streamer for at least a couple months. Um, see how it goes. You know, I mean, I've worked this hard to get where I am as a streamer, and I figured I'd give it a little more of a shot. Maybe put some more hours into the stream, see if I can grow or something. Yeah, how far do you feel like you may, and of course this may be like a hard question to answer, but like how far do you feel like you are from being able to go full-time streamer if you wanted to? Um, 
you know, it depends. You know, I think my parents are equally really supportive, but also really put a lot of pressure on me to get a real job or, you know. I know that don't feeling. To offend everybody out there, but, you know, it either, you know, I do feel where it's like, you know, I stream and then, you know, you have a night and maybe you have a couple bad nights in a row on ladder or whatever, you know, Twitch chat or whatever. And, you know, and then you think, well, maybe I should just get a real job. You know, it's like it is it is a fine line. And I think, you know, personally, financially, the support I receive in the StarCraft scene, I, I could almost justify being full time now. I could have an apartment, I think, and still pay for myself just from the stream because I have an incredibly supportive fan base. And I thank you guys for that. But, you know, it, it is it is a fine line because what happened really uh, a little bit of a longer thing was like when I was about 70 to 90 viewers for a long time and then Legacy came out and that's when I really spiked up and I had internet problems for like over a year. But I had I went that's when I started averaging over 200. I'd say I've averaged about 300 now. But the thing is, I've kind of plateaued, you know, whether that's the hours I stream, the you know, I'm only streaming about four or five hours a day. What you know, I'm not sure what it is, but I really haven't had huge leaps of viewership consistent growing upwards. I've just kind of, I'm sitting around 300, I'll get to 400, maybe I'll have 275 in a night, you know, it bounces around. So, you know, as a streamer, you do feel that when you, you know, you look at the chat and your viewer numbers aren't what they want, what you want them to be. It does kind of affect you a little bit. So it's a decision I'll make down the road, but it is definitely something on my radar to, uh, it's hard though, because when you stop streaming, you stop forever. You can't really, can't really pick it back up. Yeah, it's not even always just that you don't have like the exact viewer numbers you want. It's like the fact that when it was growing and then uh, like you don't right, see the growth right. anymore. Exactly. You know, I see that. I mean, for me personally, when I look at I compare my obviously, you know, you compare yourself to all the other streamers, mostly in StarCraft. And I feel like I have one of the more successful, especially from where I came from to where I am now. I feel like I've passed a lot of other streamers and I'm really proud of that. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it is it does get demoralizing sometimes when you know you, you maybe you have a couple long games in a row you feel good about the stream it doesn't happen really much anymore but especially when i was a bit smaller and you'd have a couple games and i'm sure if you're a smaller streamer out there you feel this and you, and you look at the chat and you just don't have any viewers and it's like you know or you have less viewers than when the game started and you're like man I, you know maybe why don't people like me <laughs> so it's tough it's tough it's hard it's hard. Um, one of the things that I love the most about your streams, and we've talked about this before, is I guess like your general positive attitude uh, toward the game and toward the scene and toward like just everything in general. And of course, everyone has like their bad days. You know, everyone goes on a big loss streak and people treat handle it differently. Some people go internally in it on themselves. Some people go externally toward like Balance or David Kim. Uh, what's kind of like your thoughts on like that whole positive mentality? That, like, I think you do an active you have an active uh, job, like, trying to keep up. Right, it, I do. And, you know, the thing is, it's not like I'm trying to put an act on on stream. You know, it's just, it's basically who I am. You know, I'm just happy. I like to smile. You know, if you met me at the event and I haven't been around, you know, I'm just always trying to laugh and smile and having fun. And it's just, it's just, you know, you don't want to go into someone's stream and they're moping around and they're not happy. You know, I mean, it's not, it's each their own. Some people like that, but... You know, when I watch someone and it looks like they're not having a good time, you know, I, you know, especially, you know, when I watch other streamers out there, I won't name anybody by names, but, you know, even streamers I like, my friends, and, you know, they're having a hard night on ladder. And it's like, man, I feel you because it's like, dude, it's hard because you have a couple, you know, you don't really understand if you're a streamer, but, you know, you have a couple of hard losses in a row and then Twitch chat's telling you what you should be doing. And you're like, you know, it is hard because, but being positive is definitely good. And the only bad thing about it is, you know, sometimes, you know, I will lose, you know, seven games in a row and I won't even, re it really doesn't affect me, but then like I won't be super happy like I'll just be normal okay and, and then Twitch chat's like oh I'm canning he's he's angry and I'm like just like can I not just be not super happy for a minute you know it, it, it so there are some times where it's like you know I you know I feel like I have to be happy all the time and you know I'm just super competitive so when I do lose a lot of games in a row it, it is hard for me sometimes to keep that you know level energy up but I do try to keep positive energy all the time yeah I know that uh it's definitely attracted a lot of people, myself included. I think you also attracted the uh, the day nine sub. I did, I did. Who I think he even talks about you like during his own Hearthstone shows. I'll be like, and you know, talking about other people, I've been like a two year sub to M Canning. I was just like, oh man, there's the M Canning drop. Yeah, actually, it's funny because uh, you know day nine's obviously one of the biggest legends we have in the community, and, and although he's not as much in StarCraft now, I remember when I first I was streaming one night, and someone in chat was like, hey, day nine mentioned you on stream yesterday, so when I went to dig up his VODs, but there's some, like, sub blocks. So then I went to his YouTube channel, and I, I watched it, and I found the clip where he's like, you know, there's not that many good streamers in the StarCraft scene anymore. Because there, I do think there is an issue. There isn't that a lot of good streamers anymore. And he said, but you know what? M Canning has a great stream. And he said that. 
and I bookmarked it and timestamped it and sent it to all my friends because it, it really made me proud, you know, and it was incredible. And, you know, day nine, you know, it's one of those things where for him, it's just, you know, another thing he just says, but to me, you know, it means a whole lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, awesome. I kept you for quite a while. I know that we both want to go back and watch some of those games that are happening right now. Um, but do you have any kind of final shout outs and also one interesting fact that nobody knows about you and I'll, I'll give you time to think about it while you do your shout outs. Oh, you want me to give an interesting fact about myself? You got to do the inner. I gotta go, I'm not going to give you an interesting fact that nobody knows about you. I got one. I, got one. Uh, I don't really have a ton of shout outs. I want to shout out to maybe Flipside. They do still support me, even though I am the last remaining Flipside player. And just, you know, a huge shout out to my stream, my supporters. You know, even if you're just watching, just lurking in the channel, um, you know, all you guys really, even if you're just sitting there, you come in for five minutes, and you all add up and you help me grow. You know, whether you want to or not, whether you don't like me or don't like me, you help me out. So, Appreciate everyone that ever has ever supported me. I mean, I know I would never be still, I would never be at DreamHack if it wasn't for the support. You know, I would have given up StarCraft if I didn't grow, and I've grown and I'm here. So it's pretty incredible. And uh, yeah, I just thank everyone for supporting me and getting me here. They're the ones that, you guys are the reason I play StarCraft. I would not be playing StarCraft every day if it wasn't for the stream. So here I am. <laughs> awesome. Well, all right. Interesting fact? Yeah. Uh, interesting fact about me is I am a twin, and my grandparents were twins. So yeah. I have a brother named Mark, and my grandparents were also twins. You have a brother named Mark, but do you also have a... Your name comes from one of your siblings, right? I have an older brother named Matt. He created the account. But yes, I, I am twins, and my, my uh, grandparents are twins. That's fascinating. I am learning something about you today. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been Fear Dragon and the man who taught Neeb how to win. So when Neeb, Neeb wins Dream Mac Austin, you'll know who his sensei was. We'll see you guys next time.